Welcome to Inside PTI, weekly videos designed to get you the trial information you want, agronomy explanations you need, and insights that will set you up for success for your farm. Hey, today we're at the PTI farm and you know we do have a lot of irrigation at the PTI farm. It's one of the things we've been working on over the last three years and um, we've got a system from Netafim here at the farm and we've got drip tape on 60 inch centers that we put on the surface so growers can see it here. And I thought I'd take the liberty today to really talk about what this corn looks like, the corn that we were able to irrigate, put water on and fertigate throughout the season compared to kind of the same corn that doesn't have any water on it. And there's some big differences this year. We've had some challenges with weather and you know we've gone from floods to drought to wind damage. And I just kind of want to take you out in the field and show you some of the things we've been working on. What does this corn look like where we've been able to add water and fertigate it compared to the same hybrids, the same programs, treatments, except for its dry land. So again, we've got a Netafim system out here. We're working with the folks from Nutri Drip out at Hiawatha, Kansas. They're the ones that came in and helped us install kind of this whole system out here. But boy, I tell you, I can't wait to show you some of the differences in the field. This corn looks amazing where we've been able to drip irrigate it. And we've got some problems where uh, some of this dry land corn kind of burn up in some of the heat and the dry weather we've had this summer. So let's go out in the field where we've got dry land corn. This will be non-irrigated. I want to show you what this corn looks like and then we'll come in and we'll dive in and see what the irrigated corn looks like here in the field. So here we're in the section of the farm where this is just dry land corn. In this plot we've got the same treatments going on but half of it's irrigated, half of it is dry land and this is the dry land so we're just relying on mother nature to give us rain throughout the growing season. And, and what I thought I'd just show you is what this corn looks like where we weren't able to feed it with water and then show you some of the irrigated corn so you can see the differences. But we're going to walk through a couple rows here and you can just kind of see this corn's giving it up. You know we're in the first week of September right now and uh, I guess corn should be going through that senescence process but when you see the difference of the irrigated corn you'll notice the amount of plant health differences and that's going to be a big attribute to yield. But let's go in this dry land corn we'll show you what this corn looks like where we weren't able to irrigate it. So we're in our dry land corn and what I want you to do is just look down the row and you can see how this corn's firing. She ran out of water. She's just giving it up. And uh, we're going through that dying and drying stage. And we'd love this corn to be a little bit greener, meaning that it's still alive and it's still adding weight to the ear. We want this corn to weigh like lead. And I'm afraid this corn just didn't have enough water and she's just giving up. So, you know, one of the things that, that we want to look at right now in, in this dry land corn is, is these ears, okay? And yeah, this isn't a bad looking ear here, but we're going to compare this to the irrigated corn. We're going to look at the difference in plant health, how much we're still alive and adding test weight to corn, and we'll compare ear size. I want to put these ears on a scale and I want to weigh them and show you the difference in yield potential of irrigated corn versus dry land corn. But plant health is a big part of this and I want you to see the difference. This is dry land corn. Okay, so this is our irrigated a part of the farm and again same treatments but just adding water and we did tissue test this corn trying to find you know some chinks in the armor if you will if we're short on some nutrients we can add it with the water but I want you to notice the plant health the greenness of the crop this crop is still alive and we're sending energy to these ears it's going to be test weight so let's go into this corn and see what it, see what it looks like in comparison to our dry land corn. All right, so we're in our irrigated corn and, and just look at the, the monsters we've, had, we've got out here. Just a, a total difference in plant health. We're green, we're still alive. We're sending sugar, sending energy to, uh, to these ears and we shuck these ears back and we got some beautiful, beautiful corn in here. This is high population. I mean, we're, we planted this at 37,500 seeds per acre and we've got a really high ear count. Of course, we've been feeding this with water giving it a drink of water all summer long. These look pretty good for, uh, again, 37,000 uh, plants per acre. So, but just look at the, the, the plant we're developing here. We're able to feed it, keep it going, and uh, adding water and nutrients, and this is changing the game. So, we're gonna go ahead and pull some ears out of here, and we're gonna weigh them, and we're gonna look at the difference, because test weight is crucial for us. We've had some beautiful, cool nights here to help finish this corn. We've had some really sunny days, and I wanna pull some of these ears out of the field. We're gonna bring them up, we're gonna put them on a scale and weigh them and show you the differences of irrigated versus dry land corn. All right, so we pulled some ears from our dry land corn, non-irrigated, 
And one of the things we do to do yield checks, and I don't know that we're, we're exactly ready to do yield checks yet because this is some high moisture corn. We've got our SIO unit that we, we, we take to the field with. This allows us to do moisture checks on our corn in a fast and easy way. We don't have to shell these, these ears anymore. We can put the SIO on. And we're running just under 40% corn right now, so we're not black layered. And usually to do proper yield estimates or yield estimates that are somewhat close, we need to be black layer. So uh, I'm not too worried about doing that yet. I just want to look at ear weight. So one of the things that we do is we take a digital scale to the field with us. We, we take our samples, our ear samples from the field. And again, this is our unirrigated or non-irrigated corn. And right now we've got these ears up here. We're weighing about 5.61 pounds and we divide this out and we're running about seven tenths of a pound on this ear. And we always say that, you know, we'd love to get, you know, number two yellow dent dry corn, about a half a pound each. That's usually a pretty good ear. We're running seven tenths of a pound here, a little bit heavier than that. But the, the problem is part of it's water. Okay, so uh, when we were using our SIO moisture tester, we were coming up with just under 40% corn. That's water in there. So, you know, I want to get to black layer. And so that, that's the point in time where we've removed some of the water and we've gained as much starch as we're probably going to get. And that's when we want to start doing our yield esti estimate on this. We're not quite there yet, but I think ear weight's fine for what we're trying to do today, measuring seven tenths of a pound. So we're going to get rid of these non-irrigated ears. We're going to bring the irrigated ears in and we'll find out what the difference is. But right now, uh, not putting water on, we're averaging about seven tenths of a pound per ear. All right, now we've got our ear samples up here and this is taken from our irrigated and fertigated section of this study. And we've got some monster ears out here. I'm really excited about what we're seeing. We weigh these, we're picking up eight pounds and guys, we've got eight ears on this digital scale and that's easy to do the math, right? These, these guys are weighing a pound each on average right now. So again, we're higher moisture corn, we're near 40%. I don't know that I'm ready to do any yield estimates yet. And again, until we get to black layer, that's gonna be the best way of having that highest starch level and being most accurate of predicting yield. But a pound, average ear size right now in our irrigated corn versus what was it in our in our non-irrigated it was seven tenths of a pound so there's going to be some pretty significant yield differences uh, with our irrigated corn so just kind of wanted to show you guys what we're seeing in the field pre-harvest right now today so today's inside pti agronomy tip of the day is High management looks like, in our case, it could be paying off. I don't know, some of the yield potential we've got in, in irrigated versus non-irrigated corn could be over 100 bushel to the acre, and why? It's knowing what this corn wants and knowing what it needs, and part of that is water, part of it is nutrients, the fertigation side of it. So we're working hard um, trying to see this yield potential, unlock the yield potential. I think it's important for us to be trying to do this and understanding how we get higher yields. If you have any questions about anything we've talked about today, feel free to reach out to any Precision Planning Premier dealer, or you can go to our website at precisionplanning.com. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you on the next episode of Inside PTI.